So I'm here with John and Eric Hober, the screenwriters of Red 2 and Red 1, and I hear you're working on Red 3. Absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> working. <laughs> working. Well, we've uh, just finished a treatment, and we're really excited about it, and we're talking about shooting next year. Wow. So. How is it to work on a franchise that, you know, the studio is so behind? Uh, it's incredible. I mean, we have the absolutely the best relationship with uh, Lionsgate Summit that we've had with any studio. They, you know, they give us a tremendous amount of latitude. Um, and, uh, you know, they, I mean, these movies have been tremendously fun to work on. And with the producer, Lorenzo de Bonaventura, who is uh, the man, he, he gets it done, you know, a, a, across the boards, pulls together these incredible casts mm -hmm. and, and uh, lets, us, lets us play. It's a good yeah, thing. Lets us get our movies made at the, at the very highest level. I mean, you know, the idea of working, you know, on a movie, with, you know, just go, with a cast like this going to work every day. You're just like, oh my God, you, you feel so lucky. Do you get to go on set? Are you on set are you during the whole process? Because, you know, sometimes they're like, thank you, bye, with <laughs> well, the screenplay. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is a sort of unusual situation, the fact that one set of writers is writing an entire, mm -hmm. the, the, all of the first one from pitch through production and now on the second one. How did you uh, pull it off? Yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> it's a great relationship with our, our creative team, and mm -hmm. uh, we all really like each other, and we have a lot of uh, respect, and it's, it's, generate a very cool thing where you can sit around and, and fire ideas and, and best one wins and mm -hmm. nobody's worried about it and when something's not working we all get back together um, and sort of look inside the group and instead of getting into that thing of maybe that guy can save us maybe that guy can <laughs> save us nobody can save us well you know uh, taking a step back this franchise has really put you on the map in Hollywood how did you get the first gig how did you get the first one it took years I mean we worked on uh, our original pitch and our outline for Red. Uh, we pitched it to every studio in town. Uh, every studio in town said no. How did you get the comic book rights? Well, at the time we had uh, our manager also represented Warren Ellis, mm -hmm. who is the absolute fantastic uh, comic book creator and novelist. And um, we had read this book and it was, you know, this sort of dark nihilistic uh, Sort of very independent sort of feeling, <laughs> but had thing. a beautiful character at its at its center Frank, that, that is right? the Frank yeah. Moses yeah. character. Mm -hmm. And so we took this character, um, and you know that wasn't really a movie we could sell to Hollywood. But the idea of the character, this guy sort of alone in a house, um, who's a former agent, but who doesn't really know how to live in the world. He's sort of spent his whole life, you know, doing terrible things, and now he's sort of alone and haunted. Uh, you know, we love that idea, and so we took that idea for the first movie, and then to that added all of these other characters. We sort of started to say, well, what if, okay, well, what's the rest of the movie? And so what if there are all these other people out there who are struggling with their past? So somewhere? you have the pitch, and it took you a long time to get it? We, 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 we took it around. Uh, nobody, nobody bought it. And it was just a pitch at that point. You didn't just write the full screenplay. Absolutely. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we were working with uh, Lorenzo de Bonaventura and, and Mark Veradian, and ultimately they took it to, to Summit. Uh -huh. It was just Summit at that point. Um, and uh, they said, yeah, right, oh, just, just right, right, <laughs> right, 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 right away. Right right uh, and it was, it was amazing because, you know, they had a different business model than the regular studios. They were, at that time, and still to some degree, really um, financing their movies with foreign sales. And they saw a potential, you know, a financial potential in this that the other studios didn't, which was, you know, we could cast, you know, there's all these great actors lying around, uh, you know, and we can put them in an action movie rather than have to, you know, you know, come up with, you know, another period drama. Uh, <laughs> and maybe they'd all have fun doing it. And, um, you know, and, and we were just obsessed with the idea of Helen Mirren firing a machine gun. And because she's, she's just, yeah, right? she, she'd just done The Queen, you know, and, and I've been a Helen Mirren <laughs> fan for forever. Um, Is she one of the first people you got on board? Uh, she she was one of one, one of, of the, the first, first yeah. but what Eric's sort of talking about is we generally we never write characters with actors in mind. Oh, okay, so um, let me, that's one of my questions I want to ask you about. Yeah. For the sequel, you do have characters, you do have actors in mind yeah. now, right? How do you balance, you know, you know, playing to their strengths, but have, but you know, at the same time you don't want to just play themselves, right? It's 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 an interesting creative evolution. I, I think it's important to write not to the movie star. Uh huh. 
purely, especially in the beginning. I like to create a, a, a character that's working very organically within the movie. Then, once you definitively know who's going to portray that character, I like to start to, to tweak it, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. a, a little bit and see what they're like and, and what they like and, and who they can be and where the fun comes from. And in this case, for instance, um, the An Anthony Hopkins character was a very unusual process. We went, he got very involved and we went back and forth a wow. lot. Uh, he built a lot of his character uh, and was intensely involved in in creating all the little movements and the ticks well, and some of the some of the ways that he spoke. He had a lot of ideas that he that we went back and forth with him on and that we ended up incorporating into the movie. Do you find that's why it's helpful to be on set? Do you ever find like let's tweak the scene, let's add something? I think being on set is is great for both you know, why they want you there, which are these emergencies come up and things change and, you know, Hober! <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, 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 you but, know, making but, a movie like that is like going to war because, you know, you, you never know you're going to lose some location, you know, you're going to mm -hmm. run out of time to shoot something, you have to restage it, so you're constantly adjusting. But at the same time, the reason, you know, that's, that's why they want you there, why I like to be there also is that I can sit there and really have a sort of long, big, old, bigger global vision and, and, and hold, you know, advise to keep us on, on track for where I think we're going. And it's nice, you know, it's in, in the way. Yeah, you're thinking of Red 3. You know they, that's coming, they, right? They Red 3, <laughs> I mean, you know, God willing. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, it's, uh, you know, so, so for everybody who's caught up in that day-to-day -day thing, it, mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to say, ah, but if we do that here, you know, back over oh, here, I see. That's great. We're, we're writing ourselves out of some stuff. So. A lot of movies go off the rails on tone. You know, they have mm. a good idea, but something just doesn't feel right. Or and maybe an never, actor gets a, a yeah, notion in their head, right? Right, yeah. and, and so, you know, we, we, we're, we're always... We always say it takes just as much work and pain and sweat and suffering to make a bad movie as to make a good movie. <laughs> so you might as well do everything you can to make a good movie. I like that. You, well, you don't sit there and go, oh, this one's really going <laughs> to suck. <laughs> <laughs> Very excited this time. You're going to really run it into the ground. <laughs> well, well, let me ask you this also, you know, just in screenwriting in general, there's kind of like this romantic notion of like the singular screenwriter sitting there by themselves, <laughs> hammering out a screenplay. How is it working as a duo? Oh, it's, it's, it's funny. I thought you were going to ask that about versus the reality of production. <laughs> Tell me that, too. Um, no, it's... Yeah. it's, it's uh, Break the myth. <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's nice because, well, I mean, that is how it, how it begins. When you're first coming up, you're not getting thrown into production, you know? You, yeah. You, 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 that's one of the things I loved and I've always loved about the screenwriting business is it's a bootstrap business. You know, you, the attraction is you can sit there all alone, write something, and if it's good enough, it'll you you will you will rise, you it'll know. Open a door. And and it's funny mm -hmm. because people are always talking about um, uh, how how hard it is to get in, and it is phenomenally difficult. But when a reader, an exec, creative exec, is has that big stack of scripts next to their bed, and they you know pull it off, and it's Sunday, and they've read four, and they have six more to go, <laughs> they open your movie. They're not going, oh man, it's just another one. I hope it sucks. They're going, please. God, let this be good. Let this be the one that saves me and takes us straight into production and mm -hmm. I can cast. So there is a, an appetite on, 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 on both sides of, of, of that equation, you know, which I think people forget or, or leave behind a little bit, which has nothing to do with well, your I'm question. So no, but I'm but so happy to hear you say that, actually. I mean, I, I found your answer very interesting nonetheless, <laughs> you know, because I think there's sometimes there's like a feeling from audiences that Hollywood maybe isn't taking the script as seriously at that stage as they used to. You know? Well, I mean, there are certain movies that you know come off to ho come off to audiences perhaps as being cynical. Uh, you know, the idea that we're going to make endless sequels and whatnot. You know, and some of those sequels maybe they maybe they shouldn't have been made. I, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I so I do think audiences do sometimes rightly feel like they're being exploited. For sure. And you know, but that doesn't that doesn't stop me of the that doesn't give me let me off the hook. My you know our job is still you know, to write a great script every time, uh, or the best we, we possibly can. And, and I think part of, part of what's n nice about this is is uh, the fact that we are the only writers on this yeah, I love on that. this franchise. And it, you know, it's it's different. There's most uh, most movies we've worked on. Some we've begun and mm -hmm. some we've finished. But uh, the norm is that there are multiple writers. Well, multiple. that's the stereo, I mean, that's like the horror story you hear from Hollywood. Like, yeah, and it's I wrote this and then I went to see it later and it wasn't anything like what I handed that, in. That's <laughs> right. And, and, and often then your, your name is your name is on it. Um, mm -hmm. Or often your name is not on it 
for for massive work, and, and that's a very that's a sort of a, a very challenging aspect of the business. You know, when you're getting eaten alive on on the internet for 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 things you you didn't do. Um, the internet you know, is a tough place. It, yeah, <laughs> and, and it's funny, and I, I shouldn't read it as much, but um, I read everything. Oh, that's so. good. All right, that's good. So, so you know you, these guys I, are out there. I, 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 will, I, will, I will quietly read your comments. Please be nicer. <laughs> <laughs> well, the last thing I wanted to ask you, it's, it's kind of in the same vein, is one of my viewers recently said, you know what, I don't understand why Battleship wasn't a bigger hit. I liked it a lot, and I, and, you know, and I agreed with him. I said, you know, I liked the movie, too. Can you talk a little bit about the ups and downs of working in the business? Sure. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I mean, just to talk about I'll take Battleship yeah. to take the business. Okay. 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 So, <laughs> Look at um, the partnership, the no, duo yeah, it's work. It's yeah. We try not to step on each other too much <laughs> in the <laughs> interviews. Get some of the brother up in there. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, uh, uh, that is a, that it, it, it's a movie that, that did, you know, set records uh, 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 across Asia and then, um, you know, uh, uh, just open didn't open here. And, and it's interesting. I mean, I, I think they're, the, the cynicism you were talking about earlier, I think there was a very clear backlash about making a board game from the get-go in, right? in, yeah. into a movie. You know, had it been a uh, Peter Berg naval action film, you know, for big tentpole popcorn summer movie that didn't have anything to do with a video game, I don't think Stephen Colbert would have been making fun <laughs> of the, 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 whole, the whole process. And there's actually, I live in Los Angeles, and uh, listen to K Rock as I as I take my uh, my little girl to uh, to preschool every morning while that was going on, and I would have to turn the radio off because they're making fun of us in just you know a year and a half before the movie comes out. Like oh uh, my goodness, as, as soon as it's, yeah. as soon as it's announced, um, and and that was uh, you know that was that was that was frustrating um, uh, to, to to see, and I really think it it had to do with sort of stepping across that line that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. business is long and you can't take it personally, you know. Uh, the fact is most people, I, 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 I'm very proud of that movie. Uh, I know Pete is. And, um, you know, we, 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 you know, it has found an audience, even if it wasn't, uh, you know, the breakout summer blockbuster, you know, box office bonanza that everybody hoped for. Uh, and, you know, part of, part of, part of surviving in, in Hollywood is, is just to, you know, you, you have to be really self-assured, you have to be really focused on your work, and you know, over the long haul, um, you know, you'll do fine. I mean, we, we, we've been very lucky uh, to be able to work on enough projects now um, that, uh, you know, people know who we are and that we, you know, that we have a voice that, that is out there. Uh, and you don't get to that too easily, and we're, we've been very, very lucky to, especially with this franchise. It's the bootstraps, you guys pull yeah. yourself up. Yeah, but right? you know, I, I do think it's important to have your eyes open in the world and, and, and not just be blindly confident about like, oh, that was them. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's why we went down to flames. It was this, that, and, and, and the other. You know, there, there are times uh, when you're, you're making a movie and, you, and you, there, there are wrong choices made, and you look back at it, and, and I really think People tend to, to whitewash. If a movie was successful, all the choices were right. If oh, a movie like mm -hmm. went down, all the choices were wrong. And for us, and especially the process of making these films, it's a stunningly gray spectrum because like you don't know how these all come out until the box office hits. And then when the box office uh, rises or falls, you, you get this label put on you, but mm -hmm. that's not what it's like to work in the in the industry. Well, that's at so all. true because so often you don't know if something's the wrong choice until you see how it plays with the audience. I mean, you, you, you wouldn't know, or if it was the right choice, you yep. don't know what's going to play. Or Avengers comes out the weekend before you open, or you yeah. know, and, and, yeah. you, and you just you know there 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 were you know good movies that get just crushed by by schedule. Well, and, and this yeah. is all uh, in addition, you know. There are a lot of really wonderful movies that don't open at all, and there's a lot of bad movies mm -hmm. that, that crush. Clean up. So you never know. Uh, you can't take it personally. Well, it's interesting because, you know, I know Red 2 opens in there four movies opening that weekend. Yeah. Uh. Right? <laughs> 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 but it's, everyone go see Red 2.